Hi my friends, it's Ro. Welcome back to my channel. Today is quarantine day. I lost track a week ago, uh, but I think that we are about three weeks in. So I wanted to come in and update you on what they're doing inside of prisons during this time because things are a little bit different. I got an email from an inmate that explains why he's petrified as we all are and they all are on the inside after you saw Monday's video about the inmate who is locked in a cell with two people who are experiencing horrible symptoms. I thought this was a good one to share as well so if you're interested please keep watching. If you're new here, my name is Ro. I am the founder of an organization called Strong Prison Lives and Families, the author of a book called The Comeback Code. I will pop a link to it up there and it's always in the description box below. We don't glorify or glamorize prison or prison wife life here, but if you stick with me, I will teach you the exercises and give you the tools that I've used throughout my really long time as a prison wife to help you get through this really painful journey. Sometimes it's so hard for me to say that. Ugh, bear with me. Before we get started, do me a favor and give this video a thumbs up. We need to share this information to help our loved ones and that's a way that you could just get YouTube to help share my videos out there. Also hit subscribe and ring the bell so you could stay up to date with all of this information and you're notified every time I post a video. Typically we post on Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and then sometimes I go live on the days in between. If something really pressing or breaking happens during this time, then I'll update on different days. So this email was dated just so we're all on the same page. This email was dated March 31st. Today is all this email is dated March 31st. Today is April 3rd when I'm filming this. So things are kind of the same, but changing rapidly as things progress with this unknown territory. The Bureau of Prisons across the board decided, I believe it was right around March 31st, they sent out a memo that said all facilities were going to go on a lockdown for 30 days. Each facility has interpreted that differently. Lockdown fully, like you saw on Monday's video, I'll link it up there if you haven't seen it. It's heartbreaking and just know that there's some very adult language in there, but it's very important information for us to share. So that's really scary to this person because of what you saw in there in the live footage. And also I'll read the email from this person who's done at least 20 years in the feds. Adam did call me to tell me this. He called me the day that that memo went out and he was not himself. And of course I didn't know this was going on. I was myself and cracking jokes and telling him how my knees hurting for, from running, give me some tips for rehab because he helps guys with rehab in there. And as he's talking, we've been together so long, I could tell he wasn't himself, something was off. So I was like, what's wrong? And he said, well, starting tomorrow or the day after, they're putting us on a 30 day lockdown. And my heart sank to my toes, just like any of you guys who are experiencing this. I held it together, but my heart sank because this was getting real. My anxiety was so bad at that point that I was not sleeping because God forbid I caught this with my asthma or he catches it or his parents catch it or my dad catches it or anybody in my family. I can't tell him. And I said to him, well, at least we have letters. At least we can write letters. He said, I don't have any stamps and they're not letting us go to the store. I said, do you have any food in your cell? He said, no, because they were on a 20 day lockdown and then they got out and they weren't allowed to go to the store. They were being punished even though Mass punishment is not supposed to happen inside of prison. Let's take a moment of silence for that for you guys to think about that for a second. But it's not supposed to happen. However, they were being punished and they weren't allowed to shop in the store, which is the commissary, for over two weeks. So this was the email that I got in response to all of this. Locking everyone down in their cells versus allowing each housing unit to remain confined together on a modified schedule so we can still shower, do laundry, access the phones and emails makes very little sense. In fact, locking us in our cells greatly increases the odds that one of us will die if staff does introduce the virus into the facility. So as of now, the virus was not in the facility. So if it comes in, it will be through somebody who's coming in from the outside. 
I was joking with Adam side note. I was like, you've been quarantined for 20 years. Just trying to make things, keep things a little bit lighthearted because this is serious and it's very scary. And his anxiety, I could tell was through the roof, although he was trying to play it off to me that he was gonna be okay. And then I think when we got off the phone and he went back and he wrote this email, he was concerned. I'm genuinely concerned about my health and well-being over the next 30 days. And with good reason, based on my previous experience, over the last 20 plus years, I've endured water outages, power outages. Outages is a hard word to say. Or is it just me and my jurors? And various other crises lasting numerous days or weeks. Those experiences have taught me that when my life is in jeopardy, I'll be left to my own devices. Staff is ill-prepared and ill-equipped to deal with a situation like this. And granted, I agree with him, but in their defense, they've never had to deal with a situation like this. Just like hospitals, just like doctors, just like nurses and medical staff, just like anybody in the world is ill-prepared to deal with this because nobody's ever dealt with this before. This is brand new, it's scary, it's growing quickly. So while I understand what he's saying and how petrified he is, and I'll stop myself and say they didn't wind up doing that all the way, thank God, but nobody's prepared. Nobody was prepared. We're just going through the motions. We're figuring it out as we go through it, which is scary, but it's the nature of it. We haven't been permitted to shop in the prison commissary for a month. No one has any food or hygiene products in their cells. And despite what prison officials may claim, the institution does not and will not meet our basic needs during the lockdown. During the last 10 day lockdown earlier this month, they served us bologna and cheese sandwiches every single day for both lunch and dinner. During that period, we were only given one shower and received two envelopes with no paper and no stamps to write or send a letter to our loved ones. We never once had our laundry, sheets, blankets, towels, or clothes washed. All of us were forced to bathe and wash our clothes in our sink every day. At a time when good hygiene practices are being touted as the sole means of protecting ourselves against this, it seems counterintuitive to remove that ability from us, which is what will happen during another lockdown. I've heard claims that we're supposed to receive free phone calls and video visits since the BOP, which is the Bureau of Prisons, canceled our visitation for 30 days, but that hasn't happened either. In fact, the 500 minutes we were permitted to purchase this month at the usual rate so we could call our loved ones will expire worthless if we're locked down for the next 30 days. It seems illogical to subject all of us and our loved ones to considerably more stress by locking us down for the next 30 days. I implore you to call or email your members of Congress, the director of the BOP and the White House officials and demand they provide some oversight and accountability to ensure the humane treatment of all BOP inmates. This is a challenging time for everyone and there is no reason why we should unnecessarily suffer more under these circumstances. I hope you and your loved ones remain healthy and safe through this difficult time. Since this email was sent, this was sent in a panic the day after, or actually I think it was the night that I got that phone call. And they are not doing it that way at this facility. In fact, I applaud them for the way that they are handling it. So what they did was they separated units and each unit is allowed out one tier at a time. So there's a top tier and there's a bottom tier. So I don't know how many people that is at a time, but when they let out one tier, it's for I think an hour in the morning, maybe an hour in the evening, to contact their loved ones, to shower, to shop. There's a limit, I think it's $50 a week maybe that they're allowed to spend, but they did reopen the commissary. Thank you God. That's I think 22-ish hours a day in the cell and then two-ish hours a day locked into the housing units one tier at a time. Thank God they can wash their bodies, they can shower, they can get their clothes washed, they're able to practice better hygiene than if they're just locked in a cell. Because logically we think, yes, lock them in the cells, but think about it, staff is coming in, they're doing their food, they're doing their trays, they're bringing around their mail, 
they're going into the cells potentially and they're shaking down the cells, they could be spreading those germs because they could not be showing symptoms of this virus yet. And then you're locking two people in there and they could have this germ and you're leaving them in there. They're not taking care of them. There's no access to medical until things progress very far and it could potentially be too late. Just like you saw in the video that was posted on Monday. So then what they did was they moved people around. That's why it took two days for this lockdown to actually start. They moved people around so they have every unit except one on the compound locked down 22, 23-ish hours a day. The other unit, this one special unit, is anybody that's a worker that has to move around the prison for their job. So it would be to prepare food. It would be to do laundry, whatever jobs people do in the prison that have to move around. They have all these guys on one unit. They're moving freely throughout the units. However, they get their temperature taken every single morning before they go anywhere, which I have to applaud the staff for the way that they're handling this there. I really, really do. And I'm sorry I'm repeating myself, but I will always give credit where it's due. So they're taking their temperatures. As far as staff, at this facility, I think I've explained this to you guys before, you drive up about 100 yards up a driveway, and then you either go left into the parking lot or you can go straight that's where the front of the building is, and there's this big semicircle. That's where people for visit will drop off people who are handicapped. That's where shuttles and buses that are dropping off visitors will drop everybody off. There are a couple, two, maybe three or four handicap parking spots there, but you can't really park there. But you can pull up. So in the video where I told you my car was searched for no, for I don't know why, the very first time it's ever happened in 10 years my car was searched, everybody's cars were searched, I could post that link to that video up there. They had us pull up there, your car's lined up. So I'm assuming this is what's happening. Before the correctional officers or any staff or vendors or anybody who's coming into the prison. Now I don't know if vendors are coming in. I'm assuming yes to bring in food if you're gonna stop the commissary. I think they stopped BOP across the board. Any kind of prison ministry, I think they might have cut attorney visits or they're doing them only on video, I'm not sure. But whoever is going to come into the facility has to get their temperature taken before they can even get out of their car. So the way that I'm assuming that they're doing it is they're pulling up, there's nurses, prison nursing staff, outside taking the CO's temperature. Once they get their temperature taken and they're not presenting with a fever, they can go up and park their car and before they even get out of their car, everybody was given masks and gloves. Is this 110% foolproof? We know because of what we're experiencing out here, it can't be because you can have this for 14 days before you get that fever. But it's the closest thing that we have that will protect everybody in there, out here. So applause to them. I think they're handling it beautifully as best that they can. They have people wiping down the phones. I mean, it's up to the inmates to really bring a sock or sanitize the phones and the keyboards before they do this. But as of now, this has worked and it is not there. I don't know that it's in the town surrounding the prison yet, but so far this is working. So I'm so, so grateful that they kind of thought this through they took the directives and they did them in a way that is so much safer. We have communication with our loved ones, so we know that they're okay. And they also know that their families out here are okay or they can find out if somebody is sick. I think that's what I'll leave you guys with. As things change or progress, I will of course make videos as I hear things. If you have any information that you wanna to send to me, if you wanna be featured because you have a story of your loved one inside, what they're doing, if they got sick or anything along those lines, please feel free to reach out to me, strongprisonwives at gmail.com or comment below this video and we'll get you on because I'm trying to give you the most up-to-date information as I can. Make sure that you guys keep writing. We're doing a 30 day writing challenge where you send a letter every day for 30 days. That said, I almost didn't do it because I was like, I am not sending people into the public post office every day for 30 days during this. You can leave your mail for the mail carrier or you can use the blue boxes with gloves on, with masks or scarves on your faces, cover your hair. I can go into detail of how I am keeping myself clean when I go grocery shopping. Your girl is not playing around. I'll pop a picture of what I looked like. Surgery, no. 
food shopping. I am not kidding you guys. I am taking this serious AF and I hope you guys are as well. The only time I ever leave the house is to go in my yard or right around my street and exercise. And if somebody is walking their dog, I side eye them. I'm kidding. I don't. They're, it's their street too. They're allowed. But I will cross the street. As far as I've experienced, everyone's working with each other really well. So yesterday I was running and somebody was walking his dog and he just stopped and he backed up. I crossed the street and he waited until I passed. Everybody's doing their part. This is where we've all seen so much compassion. Oh, and I'll tell you guys this. I asked Adam, I said, out here, when I was watching the news, there was a psychiatrist that was talking about how she's noticed that the world went through a sort of grieving process that I was talking about on my last live video. So the first week people were in denial. They're like, yeah, right, it's just the flu. More people die of the flu. And then there was anger. People were pissed off. They couldn't live their life. They couldn't leave their house. They wanted to rebel. They weren't believing it still. And then another week later, it was more of acceptance. Oh crap, this is real. Oh crap, this is my life. Okay, how am I going to readjust and do this? Then after that came a lot of compassion, people trying to help each other out, express concern. And I asked Adam if he's noticed the same thing in there. I said, sometimes it can feel like us versus them with the COs versus the inmates. You will hear me say cops and you will hear people on the inside say police or police a lot. That is all the same thing. It's correctional officers. So I said, sometimes it's us versus them, but are you seeing more compassion now that everyone's experiencing all this? He actually said, yes, they're being a lot more compassionate and they're all trying to help one another. Obviously everybody's trying not to get sick. Everyone's trying to preserve their lives. So I think it's beautiful. It's a silver lining in an awful, awful, awful black cloud, but it's still beautiful that we could see some human compassion on the inside. Okay, I've babbled, but let me know what you guys wanna hear more about. You guys keep staying strong, keep loving strong, keep supporting one another through this journey because you're one day closer to it all being behind you. Lots of love from my heart to all of yours. I will see you beautiful ladies and gentlemen in the next one, but until then, stay safe, stay healthy, and please stay home.